personal work page to show you guys this. Right, this is what you can do. Essential for you, think in decades, work. Here's a few things in work that matters. I don't do anything else, I just do these. Family, health and fitness. Anything else in your life is a distraction and it will sacrifice one of these things. Simple as that. I know this seems like common sense right now, but I promise you right now that unless you've really been nailing this topic recently, you've actually got another 10 topics here that don't even mean anything. You've got that one Jeffrey friend who's an asshole. You've got that group that you're still somewhat a part of, even though you don't even get value from there. You've got the, the Instagram theme page that you've been trying to grow and it's only got like 100 followers. You've, you're still sending cold messages on LinkedIn, even though you hate it. You've got like a lot more than you realize and inside of each one you've also got more as well because you think, oh well you know what, I, I could get a benefit if I, if I do this other, this other workout and this other diet and you know I'll do keto and I'll, and I'll fast and I'll do this and I'll do this and do this. I literally like, for me, I'm not looking to add anything into this. It would mean the world for me if I could remove anything. Right now it's like I couldn't imagine removing anything from this. But one of the most powerful things you can do is if you write this list right now, and have less on it. And truly, the, you know, obviously just the notepad having less doesn't really mean anything. It's, it's to encapsulate your life. To have less that you do, less that matters. This is essentialism. This is the only, these are the only things that really, like that I can think of that really matter in my life. And this isn't bullshit. Like my schedule actually like goes, I've just recently just updated it, but my schedule defines that. That's, that's all I, uh, this, this bit here on Sunday should just be like family time. Although I don't usually put that down. Like, there you go. That's it. This is my schedule. Now imagine, like, am I bullshitting here when I, sh when I show you this? It's actually relatively, like, how what I say is the essential stuff is what I spend my time on, right? Now imagine if, if dude, this is my, my schedule, but imagine if, like, oh, this three-hour block was wasted because you just wasted time on fucking Discord. And, uh, you know, here, oh, like, Andrew Tate podcast. Oh, you know, Tate, Tate's back, bro, guys. Oh, whoa, like, bro, show me, show me on this. Show me on this where it says Andrew Tate podcast, bro. Essential few. Like, oh, yeah, I'll take the family option out, man. You know, but Tate's going to come back. That's, that's going to be a fire emergency meeting, bro. What else What else are you adding into this, bro? You're just sacrificing progress. Oh, well, you know, like, lie, lie, in, lie down in bed. Just, you know, because I'm a fit, fighting age young man, but I just need to lie down a bit more. What else? Oh, well, you know, Fappin's not actually that, that bad, you know. Hamza's being a bit... What else we added in, bro? Our old Jeffrey friend. Jeffrey friend invited me to do something. Even though I hate him. But I'm still going to hang out with him. Anything else? The old League of Legends friends? Are they getting a response back? And what you're not seeing... Like, this seems a bit, like, comical, right? But what you're not seeing... I guarantee this isn't as funny as you think. Because what you're not seeing is these micro moments where you're replying to messages all day. And there's a 15 minute block there. And then there's another one there. Then there's another one there. Then there's another one there. Then there's another one and another one and another one and another one and another one. Where does it say reply to people you don't actually really care about? This is, I'm like, I don't know if anyone's been watching like the podcasts of me. Obviously, that's not part of your essential for you. I'm just saying. Um, I'm notoriously known in like this, you know, influencer space as like being terrible at replies. Like all, all, like I've been mentioned so many times on other people's podcasts, and so oh yeah, Hamza's terrible at replying. It's like yeah, because I, I try. Because no offense, but it's like you're not part of the essential few, bro. You might be like some high value man, and it's awesome, and you know I respect you, sure. But family, work, and fitness is the only things I really care about. I check my WhatsApp once a week, twice a week. You need to start. Treating your time like this. You need to st ask yourself right here, right now. And maybe this is something for you to like, write down. to journal after this. What is essential for you? Really, really ask that. What is essential for you? The process of becoming successful is trying to eliminate as many things as possible. Not add in. Most people think it's adding in, right? When you... Well, maybe not you, but hopefully not you, but when a young man just like you wants to figure out how to become a millionaire, the first thing he does is millionaire morning routine. What's the things that I can add in? No, it's, it's not that. The millionaire doesn't do more things than you. The, the world-class athlete doesn't do more things than you. They do less. 
it, it was never about more. The athlete that you look up to, for example, if anyone here has like some athlete on the wall and you think, oh yeah, I've got to do this thing and this thing and this thing. Not that the athlete ever said he does that, but that some random YouTuber said he did that and I've never even validated it. I've got to do this. I swear Mike Tyson did this as well. Mike Tyson did 7,000 squats a day, bro. Like, yeah, some, some YouTuber said it, so it's got to be true, right? No. Mike Tyson became successful because he didn't have a family. He had one person who he looked up to, who he saw as a family figure, and that was his boxing coach. He had less in his life, not more. The same with every entrepreneur that you look up to, I promise you right now, every single guy you look up to has at least half as much in his calendar that you do. That's essentialism. That, that graph that we saw where it's like the circle, the energy's going out. Maybe draw that for yourself, let me just show you the picture. That would be a interesting, um, I don't have it open, sorry. Uh, let me just open that. Yeah, this one. Maybe draw this out when you got time after this call. And for this one, the one on the left, draw that out and actually label each arrow. And don't bullshit yourself because you'll, you'll get a few ideas and then you'll stop and you'll be like, oh yeah, that's it. Let that sit for a little while. Tape that up to your wall. Go and like, you know, keep asking yourself this. Because I guarantee if you really are honest, you'll have to draw about 30 of those arrows if you really keep asking yourself over the next week. If you really keep, and then, you know, there's this other friendship group. There's this, this Adonis school. Then there's Hamza's YouTube videos. Then there's Tate. What's happening to Tate these days? And, you know, Tristan Tate looks really good in suits. Maybe I should wear more suits, guys. Oh, that, that might get me more status, bro, bro, bro. Like, and looks, money, or status. Which one is it that actually gets more? Like, your brain's just full. Now, if you really keep asking yourself over at least a few days, you'll start to realize that your, your brain points are being sapped in 30 different directions. And it's no one, no wonder. Look how much progress he's making in each one right now. It's nothing. This is how we, where most of us are living. Now, I don't think we should just live a one-dimensional life where we've got literally nothing else because that would probably be sad. But maybe three is the perfect amount. You get three things that means a lot to you, but you choose the most important one. So for me, it's work, then health and fitness, then family. So it, it's actually like, I've not put this in order, but if it was going to be in order, it would be like this. And then act like it. I sacrifice time with my family so that it can work. I sacrifice a little bit of health and fitness, not like to a crazy level where obviously I'm so unhealthy that I can't work anymore. But work's like literally just simply authentically the priority. And so I act like it. I've got three things on my plate. Obviously, that this isn't me to show off. It's, this is because I'm, I'm quite newly like this, only in the last few 10% of my entire life. But school especially fucks you up, doesn't it? Who's, it, who's still in school or university right now do that? They're fucking you, aren't they? They have literally, they have, like, how many little arrows have you got from school? You got that one Jeffrey kid in your class, you got the girl that you'd, you'd kind of like to be with, you got the, the old friendship group, you got the new friendship group, you got the one random guy who's kind of a bully, but he says it's only a joke. You got the teachers who are kind of bullies, but they say it's only education. You got the tests coming up, you got the homework assignment, you got the project, you got the little group assessment thing. It's like school is one of these by itself, never mind then the rest of your life with your family and your, your own goals and fitness and everything as well. So I don't blame you for feeling quite overwhelmed and not making huge progress whilst you're still in school. <laughs> Any questions so far? We'll go with Amit. How are we doing, bro? Hey, they're all good. What can you, you hear me? Yeah, I can. What did you want to talk about, bro? Um, so you said that pretty much we should be doing less and the less is more. So then what should we do when we have a lot of free time? Like, as you said, we need to do less things. What's the most important thing for you? Uh, right now it's fitness. Do more fitness related things in that free time. Like for example? Different kind of workout, stretching, rehab, learning, uh, getting ideas from people, speaking to people about it. Naturally, you'll get more ideas and to improve. Um, steady state cardio, you can do that for a few hours a day really. Yoga. If it's the most important thing for you and it's really, really like 10 out of 10 important for you, 
You can okay. spend a few hours extra on it. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. You're welcome. W in the chat, boys. Vomit. And that's actually a good point, right? Because it would be... Most people's advice there would tell Amit, who just came up then, oh, no, no, just just minimize it, bro. Like, literally, just, just like, you know, just work out, you know, for uh, seven minutes a week, and then, you know, you don't have to do anything else. You know, don't overdo it. I actually disagree with that. I think that the thing that is genuinely your burning desire right now, you should spend a crazy amount of time on it. So for me, when it was fitness, you have, like, you've got enough free time, right? When you don't do bullshit, you've got free time. If you don't do anything productive in that time, naturally, you just go and do the bad habits, don't you? So what you need to do, if you've got, a, like, some free time right now, but you feel like, oh, but I can't, like, work out any longer, right? Because I already do my three to five workout routines. But you can literally just add, like, the block there and simply just sit there and think about it. And I promise you that this will make you into the next level. Because this is what the world-class athletes, entrepreneurs do. It's like, if I, like, for example, I'm in work block 6 to 12, right? If there's no task for me to do, I'll literally just sit here and think about work. How can anyone win? How could someone win against me when, like, even though I've got no work, I'll literally just sit here and just think of new things that might, like, be valuable. And maybe I'll get some ideas. Some days I won't. But most of the days I actually get an amazing time after time after time after time after time loads of ideas that I wouldn't have if I just thought to myself, yep, yeah, you know, there's nothing else for me to work on. Like, if it's the most important thing of your day, if it's the thing that really means a lot to you, if it's your purpose, your mission, spend more time on it. Arjun, what do you think, bro? Hey, bro. Uh, so, I have a question about how school is really fucking us over. So I was wondering, like, what can we do about that? Because, like, I'm in an Indian family, so of course, education is the most important. But I'm also trying to find ways to, you know, maybe uh, start some stuff on YouTube. And I'm getting kind of overwhelmed. So what can I do about that? Good question. So what I've just said is when you've got the, the most important thing to just allocate more time to it. When you have something that is way less important, minimize it make it more efficient. So use the productivity tactics that you can learn online. Use the 80-20 rule. Someone just said here, outsource it. I'm not going to lie to you. I cheated in all of my exams. Do what you got to I'm not saying to cheat, but if it's, if it's not important to you personally and you want to live like an authentic masculine life and there's something else that you'd rather do, then do the other thing. Because you can get the grades and the, the money or whatever it is that other people will think that you're a success for. But if you don't think you're a success and you're not a success, then it was, it was pointless all this time. So either you need to go have an awkward conversation with your parents soon, or you'll still have one 20 years from now when you feel like you've wasted your life. That was pretty... I was pretty scary to think about. I uh, appreciate it, bro. You're welcome. To just give you some some things you can implement right now. Exactly what I because I didn't. I'm saying this and it sounds kind of hype, but I didn't have the balls to act on this either. You know, if I was in your position, I'm not gonna just. I'm me, Papa. I'm not going to school anymore. I'm, <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no way I'm doing that, bro. I didn't have the balls for that. So what I would do if I was in your position. I would go and learn a bunch of these productivity tactics, deep work, 80-20, Parkinson's law, and I would make it so that at the very least, I was absolutely done with school inside of the school hours. I would make it so that it was absolutely like just impossible for me to do anything school related after school, you know, homework and everything. I'd just do it all in my lunchtime, everything. So that as soon as I finished school, it was time for like something else. And I would also just wake up earlier and I would work on the thing that's more important. So if you really do think that YouTube is the priority you need to act like it if you're not doing youtube before you go to school then it's not the priority and you're bullshitting yourself wake up earlier and get one hour of deep work in youtube and you'll make a lot of progress all right thanks bro thank you for coming up on it arjun watching in the chat boys and we've got custom coming up what's up brother hey what's up i'm good bro. um so my question is if 
is it worth sacrificing uh, one of these three categories, sort of, uh, for one moment of time, just to get uh, way forward in another, so then you can possibly not stop it, but you you just gain more leverage as you go further, right? And so I imagine if you sacrifice, for example, your health a little bit right now, but you do more work, you're gonna get the leverage to um, like get back the health while still doing the same amount of work per total in future. Fantastic question. Let me tell you. Let me show you right now. Uh, one sec. I'm gonna tell you a little secret about successful people that I know. Okay. So I've come to know quite a lot of millionaires now, quite a lot of guys with millions of followers and everything. I'm telling you right now, what's being told to broke people is not what rich people do. So broke people, like you've been told by your teachers, they're telling you balance is key, moderation, all this shit, bro. There's yeah. no millionaire out there who's actually balanced. This is exactly what they all do, even though a lot of them don't actually explain it. This is They've got their essential few. Usually family's not even in there. Sometimes health's not even in there, and it's literally just work. What they do... Everyone thinks that the way to become successful is that you right now in every one of these areas You are making progress 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 bullshit That's not how it works how it actually works if you want to become super successful is you choose one thing Let's say this one. I want to get really good on YouTube and make the good things. Okay This is now Let's go here we are in the season of this. We are in the season of making Huberman style videos. Now what we do is for this, 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 all of these ones, we simply just do the absolute minimum effective dose to not backtrack. Family, have tea for four minutes with my mom every day. Love, see my girlfriend for exactly two hours per week. Sleep consistency, that doesn't need to backtrack. It's just, okay, just go to bed at 10, wake up at six. Stretch, I'll do literally two minutes of stretching per day. Exceptional diet, that's gonna help me with the work anyway. So, but it's, you know, just eat the eggs, eat the steak and stuff. Bodybuilding protocol, like workouts, I'm going to go to the gym for one day per week just to not backtrack, right? The idea is we, we're just trying to barely maintain. To maintain is generally about three to five times easier than to grow. Just, that's just my assumption of like if everything was like the weightlifting. So what this means is to grow in weightlifting, a lot of scientists say you need to do the equivalent of like five to ten sets, maybe even more. To maintain, you really only have to do like one good set per week. So you can literally go to the gym once per week for about one hour and you'll maintain your gains. The idea is you can make progress, like like huge life-changing progress in one thing and then you just try to stop the other things from backtracking. I have complete proof of this. This is exactly what I did with Adonis Academy, like the, the one I had before this. Everything else, I just put it at maintenance volume. I worked out for jet, literally 10 minutes a day and it was at my home. I didn't. I stopped going to the gym. I didn't even, I've literally not even had a haircut since then or anything. <laughs> speak to my mom, speak to my family when I'm literally in the kitchen making tea, not even to spend with them, but to like bring it up or making coffee to bring up. But that was like enough to kind of maintain like a bit of a relationship with them. Like I'd come in, hug my mom, say hi to some, something to my dad. He's telling me about something. I'm making a coffee or whatever reason i'm in the kitchen and i bring it back up that was just about enough there see my brother every now and then see my girl once a week for literally just a few hours max nothing's backtracking to a huge level nothing's you know, like flaring up badly and i just went all in on adonis academy and i literally i think well at first yeah, i have five times my business success in one month doing that and now it's been 10 times with adonis school would not have made that progress if I was still trying to make gains in this and I was still researching more about diet and also what's the, you know, the Huberman stretch video, let's go see the most effective neurological way to, you know what I mean? It's just literally right here, right now, Alex Homozi, I like this. This is the season off. This is what Alex Homozi says. This is the season off and choose one thing in your life, bodybuilding. This is the season of YouTube. Everything else, just try not to let it backslide. But if you're trying to make progress in something else, you're gonna sacrifice both things. Bro, that's a perfect answer. Holy shit. Thank you a lot. Yeah. Like, really appreciate that. So you just keep maximizing one and then minimum for the rest. Like, bro, that's... Oh, let me tell you one more thing. Let me tell you one more thing. Yeah, actually. yeah, okay. Let me, let me drop some more game. So you've just done that. This one's just been improved. Fantastic. 
this got to a really good level. I got to you know three million, three point five million subscribers or whatever level it got to. Okay, that's sweet. Now I'm starting to actually feel like shit because I've actually lost a little bit of muscle whilst I've been focusing on this, and you know that's whatever it is. What you need to do, the secret of success, is literally just to think of what's the constraints. That's it. You've been told to focus on your strength. Actually, that's bullshit. You've been told to you know work on your strength. No, no, it's not. Doesn't matter because if one thing of this is constraining you right now leveling up something else is going to make your life worse for what i mean for example is let's say that the goal it was never in our lives to just hit one single goal was it the goal was simply the overlapping goal of live the best life right so that's generally like what we're probably all of us would say we weren't born here to simply just get youtube subscribers or to just spend time with our family it's like our goal is simply just have the best highest life quality possible what you need to figure out is what is the current thing that's stopping you from that right now is it, for example, this, like the million subscribers, let's say for me, is the reason why my life's not as good as it could be because I'm at 2 million subs and not 3.5? Probably not, right? So maybe it's not so smart that this would be the focus. So what could it be? For a time, it was actually love. It was that I was anxious. Every single relationship that I would get into and it was always toxic and stuff, that's what was constraining my life quality. So it's like, imagine it as like, let me see if I can, if I can draw something for you. Imagine it like this. This is a ladder, right? Like that. Mm -hmm. I'm using like, yeah. So this is a ladder and it can just keep going up. Now imagine, fuck. I wish I could just draw in my hand. Uh, <laughs> this is how a lot of people's lives look. And actually wait. This is how a lot of people's lives look. They've leveled, this is a ladder, right? So how far can you go up this ladder? To here, right? After that, there's nowhere else. Like you can't, even though there's the two sides of the ladder, there's, there's not another like rung for you to step on. So you can get to level three, that's it. Most people, what they'll be doing, they'll see this, this is what their life is, and they'll just keep putting on more of the ladder here it's not doing anything. This is why your life's not getting better when you're still like focused on muscle, bro. It's not helping. You're, like you can bench 100 kg now. It's like, oh, well, you know, it's, what, what's the point? You're still at number three, bitch. So how about you go figure out what is the, 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 the third rung there? Why isn't it here? Because when you actually level that one up, suddenly you just go up the next two steps like that. This is exactly what it was for me. You need to figure out what the constraint is. For me, this this like one in the middle. If I just show you like this. This is how it looked like for me. I thought that this thing in the middle, the one that I was focused on, was the audience size. I was just constantly trying to get more subscribers, more subscribers, more subscribers. It's almost idiotic when you look at it because this was my subscriber, like this big one here, my subscriber count. That was not the constraint. I had 2 million subscribers. That was not the constraint. The constraint of my business was how I was monetizing and the psychology behind, like, you know, what, what I believed was right about making money. I thought like making money was like a wrong thing because of the amount of like 14 year olds who called me like a scammer or something for like having the product, right? <laughs> so my belief of was there. That's why I stopped. And as soon as that got updated, Fuck, bro, I hate this fucking keyboard, right? As soon as that got updated, suddenly all of these started filling up. So what you need to do with, with what we're talking about here, you need to figure out first, first get down the essential few things in your life and don't just copy mine. Really be honest with yourself and ask yourself, okay, what is just a few things that actually mean like everything to me? And if I, like, for example, look, you don't see friends here, do you? Now that, that might seem sad, but the thing is, I can't add another thing to my plate and I, family means more to me than friends. To be honest, I'm absolutely fine without like many friends. I've got like a few guys that I'll speak to consistently online. I've got a few people I'll speak to, you know, it's fine. But the thing is, I would rather turn my family into friends than start with new friends. It's not there. How cool would it be if I told you, oh yeah, your friends are here too and I've got this other thing and I've got this other thing. You can, I didn't like, do you know what I mean? Like, genuinely, this is what my life is like. Now you might say that's that sad. No, I need friends. Okay, so put it into your list. But what are you going to sacrifice for that? Maybe it'll be family. Maybe it'll be work. Maybe it'll be fitness. But in general, I don't know how many you can have. Maybe it's different for all of us. Maybe it should just be three or two. And so the way to decide then, once you've got the essential few things, which one to really make progress on right now, because you can only really make progress in one thing because you need to, to make progress in something. 
I personally find you need to put about 10 hours of like thinking a day into it. If you're trying to make progress in two things, your minds, your, your shower thoughts are contaminated. Do you know what I mean? If I'm, if I'm just trying to make Adonis school exceptional, literally I'm thinking about it for 10 hours a day. No one who has a private community can compete. Andrew Tate can't even compete with that because he's thinking about other things. He's got this podcast. He's got this. He's got this. We're going to match Hustlers University. Because I'm spending, genuinely, I'm having a shit. Every shit that I take, I'm thinking about it. You can't match. So, but as soon as you allow two things, oh, now this, then it's like you lose not just half, but you also lose like this residue, like 10, 20, 30% because of this like task switching thing. So you need to figure out which one it is. And the way you do that is just by imagining this ladder and thinking, okay, this is how like the ladder of your life looks like right now. There's one side that you've really focused on for a while and that's done really good. There's another side that's pretty good, but there's something which is down there, which is constraining your life, which is causing your life quality to be very low. And it might not be the thing that you really want to work on right now. It might be some like some little pussy stuff like, oh yeah, by the way, like, you know, I've still got childhood trauma that I've not healed and that's probably the real thing because a little bit of muscle is probably not going to help a lot of guys right now. Now, if you're at the start of your journey, the rest of your life is pretty good, then it might do. Then the muscle and like your physique might be there. But if, for example, you've been going to the gym for one, two years, that's probably up here now. What else is it? Maybe it's mental health. Maybe it's family. Maybe it's like learning how to actually love a woman properly and like effective communication. It's This is incredibly valuable. I'll just, I'll keep this, um, I'll copy this over as well. There. Anything you want to say about that, Custom? Bro, this is just, this is life-changing advice. Now, like, the only question that I have left, which is, I have a guess about it, but is it like... So for the main focus, like for the work, health and uh, love or family type stuff, like one of them can be the constraint for your entire life. But is it is there like this letter for each one of them? Uh, like, is there a, a letter of constraints for work only, for example? And that and that letter is made out of this part, this part and this part. So for you, it would be like uh, audience, Adonis call, and then I don't know, uh, some other stuff, some other word that you do. Yeah, 100%. So what you've asked is, is uh, so this constraint ladder I've just showed you, is that just in general for your life or for everything? It's for every topic of your life. It's for your physique. So it is exact same thing, let me show you. I find this super fucking interesting, right? So this same thing, right? Or uh, let me show you here, this thing, right? So we're at level two. For your physique, it's the same thing. You there's a there's a muscle group that you love to train. Let's say it's chest. You love chest that you've been hitting there. Okay, bench press is looking good, right? Chest is up there, bro. You're like your physique's not looking any better. You go hit another like great chest section, sweet. But you don't look any better. If anything, you look kind of weird. You know what would really make you look like suddenly more jacked? You now go and train back seriously because you realize that's the constraints. So even with something like your physique, go and find out what is the thing right now that's lacking, that's like the smallest thing, and you should probably only train that. Now, when you're a beginner, train full body, whatever, but after you've trained for about one year, I promise you, like one to two years, unless you've got superior genetics or something, for most guys, you know, like you get the noob gains, you make a bunch of progress, and then after that, it's never the same. The reason why is because you can literally, just like everything else, you can literally just make progress in one thing. Mine's just arms now. So everything else is maintained, arms get a few more sets per week, and they're finally growing. That's it. Now, if you, oh, but, you know, I want to get bigger arms, I want to get bigger legs, and, you know, there's a certain uh, squat form for the, the teardrop of the leather. That's what you need. Like, bro, just shut the fuck up, bro. Choose one thing, and you can make progress in it whilst everything else maintains, or you'll just stay small forever. Bro, that's, that's genuinely life-changing advice, I swear. Thank you a lot, man. Thank you a lot for Thank this you, type of advice. You're welcome, bro. What's then in the chat, boys? <clears throat> yeah, this is some valuable stuff, man. I, I really wish I had a guy that um, was teaching me this stuff a few years ago, bro. So, where are we? Uh, let's see. So, we've covered a bit of essentialism. We've covered the theory of constraints. Let me think. Where am I personally? What sort of life experience I can tell you?
Yeah, let me. So you know, I was I was sixty something like. 30 seconds late to this call, man. man fuck, fuck anyone who called me out from that. No, I'm joking. I was like 30 seconds late to this call. Literally 30 seconds, right? Because I have a call on Thursdays. I get coaching myself. I really think coaching is awesome, by the way. So I'm a coaching uh, student and someone coaches me with my problems. And we ended up talking about um, this that exact same picture. Let me just show it to you one more time. You probably know it by now. In fact, let me let me draw it. Let me draw it for you. Let me show you something of how you don't need to do this, by the way. Uh, what I'm about to say, but I think. Let me show you. Let me just show you. Give me one second. Okay. So this is a picture that we saw before, right? Everyone under, everyone understands this picture now, yeah? This is all relative. So the extent to which I'm about to explain my story, you, no offense, you probably shouldn't go that serious just because I've got like higher leverage. Like, I, I, I don't, don't mean to sound like an asshole, but like my one hour, I can make more than $10,000 per hour. So it's like, there's there's levels to this shit. So what I'm about to say is going to sound deeply autistic, but you should use the the strategy, not the exact tactic. I spent over two months not training at a gym because I didn't want to walk for about 10 minutes to get there and also for the thoughts that would arise from training in a public gym. So when I came back from Thailand and Dubai, I moved back home to the UK in March. I literally worked out at home even though I didn't even have any equipment. I've got a pull-up bar and, and bought some kettlebells because I simply just didn't want this to occur. I knew that if I went to the gym that I would suddenly start to get too infl like my brain would be too infiltrated by the, the things there and it literally this is exactly what's happened. So imagine these thoughts I'm having, right? I move back home. All I want to do is literally just do this 100%. 10, 14 hours a day of work in a Donish school, make millions, that's my goal, make a million a month, and I'm literally on track for that. I'm not even taking the piss, bro. A million a month, and you can do the math yourself. Look, because I know this sounds like like crazy numbers. It's it, like, to be a millionaire even seems crazy. To say a million a month just seems like stupid, right? But I want you to just literally do, do the math yourself. Remember how much money you paid for a Donish school, right? Four, four, six, times that by how much you paid for your, you, you, the, uh, four, four, six. The starting fee, the, the one-time fee was four, nine, nine dollars, wasn't it? That's how much I made, and it's been less than a month. I made more than what doctors make in a year, in a month. And actually overnight, I made 75K. So there's leverage to this game, right? So I'm not, at the same time, you know, I'm saying, oh, but you're not like this. But the, the truth is, if you want to be like this, if you want to get really successful, you need to start valuing your time a lot higher. Like if you do any, like you need to be valuing your time I say $50 to young guys, but that's because there's a lot of guys with small dicks out there. If you value your time with anything below 100 or even up to about $500 an hour, you're probably not going to become successful. You should right here, right now be thinking, yep, my time is worth $100. I'm not going to waste an hour of my time is $100. If I have to walk for an extra four minutes somewhere, it's probably not worth it. I can return this thing on Amazon and, and get $7 back. It's not worth my time. I know this sounds crazy and a lot of people won't even understand or anything, but this is how you get to the, to the true elements of, su of success is just valuing your time to a crazy number because everyone else your age, what do they value their time at? $10, $5, even less, right? So some people like dumbasses your age get paid $15 an hour and they will literally spend an hour trying to save $5. They're not smart. You should be thinking to yourself, I will do nothing under $50 or $100 an hour. So the only things you really spend your time on, the most important task of your business, for example, is recording videos and then just learning. That's it. That was my secret. That's what I spent my like two years doing when I started dominating YouTube. Record videos when I needed to record videos and then just learn. Everyone said learning's a waste of time. Reading's a waste of time. It's like, let me just, reading's a waste of time. Where's that calculator gone again? Reading is a waste of time, huh? Well, this number proves otherwise. Oh, but you know, oh, it's a, I'll just do something faster, bro. I'll just ask ChatGBT to somewhere. I'll shut up, bro. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, I moved back home 
And I gen, you know how much I love the gym. I genuinely did not even sign up to a gym for over two months because I was certain that this was going to happen, that all of my focus was on my business. But I knew the moment that I signed up, suddenly, you might not have thought about this. Suddenly, I'm going to start caring about what clothes I'm wearing. Suddenly, I'm going to want to get a haircut. My ex works at that gym. It's probably going to be like, you know, there's going to be some random thoughts in there because the chances are right here, right now, at, at this point, you know, a month ago, all day, every day, I was thinking about business. And so I made rapid progress. I literally like five, ten times how much money I was making, which is unreal. I knew for a fact that the moment I walked through that gym, my attention was going to be spread out. What's that person think of me? What's that person think of me? Is there going to be someone here that I don't know? Is my old like friend is you know the one who like betrayed me a bit? Is he going to be here? Is my ex going to be here? What days does she train? Is she she's trains here now? I thought this. I delayed the decision. I was like, no, nah, I'm fine. I'm just going to train at home, and made huge progress in the business, started to make so much money that I didn't really need to make more money anymore. And that like the constraints kind of like went off. More money is no longer the constraint of my life. And it was, I'm not gonna lie, fitness became it. I was like, I was still quite physically fit, but I just kind of, I, um, I missed hard physical training because training at home, you just don't get the same thing. Even if you've got the right equipment, it's just like not really the same thing, right? And so I'm like, you know, debating it. Oh, you know, well, you know what? If I go, it's going to be better for fitness because it's going to be a harder workout with better equipment. And when there's more people around me, I do perform better. Maybe it's ego, whatever it is, right? And, you know, I kind of like forget about this for a while. Sign up. And, you know, recently I've been finding myself a lot like less happy very recently. And I literally just had like a, a coaching call speaking to my coach, the one who coaches me, telling them all about this, that recently I've been thinking about changing up my style. I've been thinking about joining MMA, all these things. And he's like, oh, like, you know, what, what's up? Like with all these new desires. And we broke it down. It's like, because I joined this gym and I'm around other people, how silly is this, right? I have literally just considered like, once again to go super serious in MMA just because there was a guy that I walked past a few days ago who was a, like seemed a little bit intimidating. And I thought to myself, well, you know, if I became like a MMA fighter, I bet I could beat his ass or something. And I literally started to like think, oh, you know what? Like I'll, I'll, I'll spend 10 hours a week training and you know, it'll be a business benefit because the boys will hopefully like me more, right? Like, you know, hopefully I'll feel like I deserve love. And you don't realize how much your brain's power is just being sapped away. Think about it. I literally just wanted to lift some weights and a few days later, I'm genuinely considering picking up an entire new sport because of one person that I've just seen inside of the gym. No progress. If this is you right now, broke forever. Broke up until you change. No, not forever, sorry, but broke up until you change something. So we uncovered today, me and my coach, that he set an assignment for me that I need to go to the gym and just essentially just not give a fuck and just keep going as it is and just to sit there in the, the slight discomfort of emotions. Of, for example, when one of the waitresses sees me in my hair, I've not had a haircut for like two months. I, I um, went monk mode, so I trimmed my own hair. My bit, like, you know, I'll groom up a little bit, you know, I'm not looking like terribly scruffy. It's like, yeah, sure, I don't have a fade or anything, but like, I'm not as attractive as I usually am. I'm not as like cleanly looking as I usually am. I'm supposed to just kind of sit with that instead of letting it change my life trajectory. So why this is relevant to you is because I'm giving you the story of when I was just a centralist and I made rapid progress in my business that was the main thing for me the moment that i opened up my life and i stopped being as essential as simple as just going to the gym which pretty much like wave your hand like this if you go to a gym like a public gym with other people most people right maybe there's only going to be a few guys who either one don't go to the gym at all or two go you know, do something where they're not in the gym they do calisthenics or something right by simply just going to the gym i can feel a huge significant difference here just by going to the gym so i want you to think where are you right now because you might not think that you know you're this guy on the left who's got all these arrows and stuff but you're i'm telling you you've still got seven arrows right now because unless you have completely cut everything out of your life apart from just a few things you do not know how focused you could be when you spend 14 hours a day doing the same thing you start to realize your capacity, your potential. 
and you realize you are so much better than you've ever saw yourself before. That's how you dominate your competition. Because these days, the thing is, everyone's working hard. Everyone's being productive. That's my recent story with this. Any questions on that? <clears throat> we'll go uh, Izzy then. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, letting me speak. So, a brother asked, like, if I'm focusing on physique and I have free time, what should I do? And you answer to learn about something and do anything, like uh, something related to that. So let's say right now I'm interested in business. Thing. So I'm learning, learning, learning three deep work sessions and I'm done. So I have like four hours of free, free time. I opened a podcast like uh, Alex or Moses podcast. I listened to it and my brain was literally fired. Like uh, if I feel myself, I would see like smoke coming out of my fucking head. So uh, it's something related to brain points. Like I do the work, I have free time, but I have, I don't have the capacity, the capacity to use it. So what should I do? Mm, okay. You, you get good deep work done, but when you have some extra free time, you try to be productive in that time, but the thing you're trying to do, your brain can't focus in. Yes, absolutely. This, this comes down to calendar schedule. So you can see here with my calendar, you need to start, I don't know how much you've done so far, but you need to very, very much learn about yourself. So there's a reason why, for example, I'll learn here because my brain for like actual working output doesn't work as well. There's a reason why, you know, I'll, I'll exercise. Like everything is calculated when I, is what I mean. Like, for example, here I was experimenting with this because usually this is where my brain's not working so well. So it's like, okay, well, you may as well just try and hit a workout then. The issue was that this workout would just be trash because this is just naturally when I get a dip. So what I can just do is I can just get comfy on the chair and just read a book and it's at least something productive. What, what's happening right now is you're hitting one of these like energy troughs, like this energy dip period of your day. And you're still trying to do something that you can't actually do at that time. So f for me, for example, if I tried to do deep work here, it would be horrible. The times I have like calls here are literally like my worst, like these ones, my worst possible days ever because my brain just doesn't work well. And I hate having calls there. I think this is what you're going through. You've got the wrong thing at the wrong time. If you've got that free time and you're saying that you can't learn through podcasts, then don't watch the podcast, don't force yourself. What I would do if I was you is I'd, at first, keep the same category of your life, so you said it was business, and I would change the thing that you do. So for example, maybe you wanna walk and listen to the podcast, maybe that would change things. Maybe you want to like journal and ask questions. Maybe you want to open up a Notion page and just kind of like be curious and ask questions. Maybe you want to go onto ChatGBT and ask it for an hour, ask it for advice and like whatever the, the topic is and see which one of those tasks is still high leverage, high value, and also that you feel like you can actually do right now. This is also just a quick disclaimer because you mentioned that you know you feel overwhelmed and everything. This is all based on being like a healthy, productive person who isn't sleep deprived. Most people are sleep deprived. Maybe it's you. So maybe those four hours should go more towards sleep and rest first. No, I sleep well, very well. Uh, I have a, another question that you allow me. Go on. So I put in my calendar a three sessions of deep works. And the first session goes okay. The second session goes okay. But the third, the third session, like, uh, it isn't so productive. And to be honest, three ses sessions is uh, kind of small, uh, a low amount of sessions to really progress, as I think. I'm thinking with, of adding a fourth session, but that won't be really helpful to me because two sessions is my limit. So should I place them in another time or what should I do? It would, too, it would be too hard for me to give you advice like this. I'd need to know so much more about your life story, to be honest. I think this is too personal for this type of lecture, bro. Okay, no problem. Thank you for coming up, though. Uh, I thank you. W in the chat, boys.
Apologies, couldn't ask, answer that second question. Luca, what did you want to say, bro? Oh, you, I can't hear you, bro. Oh no, Luca. Testing one, two. Now we'll go to someone else. You let me know if you fix your mic, bro. Otto, how are we doing, bro? Can you hear me? How you doing? Yeah, yeah we can, man. I just wanted to say, um, I'm doing the YouTube. It's going quite well. I'm, I'm also doing like coaching calls, but it's, it's for like chess. And I'm doing like forty pound an hour, and I'm just wondering if I should just scrap that and just do like just focus on my YouTube and then like try like make a course or something. Do you need money right now? Um, I wouldn't say so because the ad revenue is still quite good. Yeah, scrapping them. All right, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. No need to trade time for money if you don't need the money. Coaching and, and jobs can be great if you need the money right now, but if you don't need the money, then don't do them. All right, hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can, Luca. All right, <laughs> so uh, I waste like half my day at school and, and like it uses a bunch of my brain points, as you said. Uh, do you know like what I can do like after school? Like if I should like read or like record videos for my YouTube channel? Is YouTube the priority in your life? Um, I haven't really written, written it out. I haven't really done like, like which is my pr priority yet. But I should probably do that like today. But yeah, I'd say it's a priority for me. A priority sounds like bullshit, bro. It's either the priority or it's not. All right. Figure that out first. Figure out what the priority is. Is it school? Is it YouTube? Is there a different kind of work, career, business? Whatever it is, do that first before school. Wake up earlier. At 5 a.m.? If you really, really want to move the needle along, and for example, you come home, you're feeling tired and everything, you're not making progress, and you really want to be dedicated, go to sleep an hour earlier would be the best like best possible that you can to you know try and get to sleep earlier don't look at sunlight don't look at the screens and everything wake up with the alarm shoot up fast record three four five videos or however long videos you you can do for like one hour then you'll start to make real good progress all right sounds good thank you luca no problem man you're welcome luca in the chat boys right let's move on Let's see what we're up to now. Essentialism and effortless. All right here, this is Yeah, that's it, to be honest. I, I always thought I was doing the hard work, especially when I didn't feel like it. Bro, it's a little bit bullshit, I'm not going to lie. I literally just made the hard work effortless, and so it's not hard. It's just work that's actually more fun than video games. So that's this is one sentence for you to really contemplate about. Really think this to yourself right now. It's not about trying to do the hardest work with discipline, David Goggins mode. That, that stuff can be very valuable at points. You know, It'll help develop you into a certain caliber of man and stuff, right? But it's more, if you really want to become successful in especially business, careers, it's about making it easy to do so that it's like literally just fun for you. Because this isn't, this doesn't require discipline. When you see my normal day, like it, it doesn't actually require discipline for me to work like 10 hours a day. I'm not even disciplined for that. Genuinely, it requires me discipline. This is the hardest part of my day when I'm trying to stop working. I'm always, this is the one I always end up like, I don't ever like, I'm not a Jeffrey, I don't ever like stay up past my bedtime, but it's always like, I always notice I'm always a few minutes late. It gets to like 9.50, 9.20, 9.25, and then I'm like, okay, before 9.30, I always end up stopping. It takes me more discipline to not work. 
Think about that. It takes me more discipline to not work on the things that are supposed to be hard for everyone else. Now, there's actually two things I should write down here, you know, effortless and important notes. Maybe not everything can be effortless because there's lots of things which I try and do, which as much as I try, they, I can't find a way to make them effortless. And so guess what? I usually just don't do those non effortless things. That's it. It's the, the secret to like the, the superior su uh, discipline that it looks like I've got. It's just that I do things that other people need discipline for, but they're fun for me. So for you, figure out the things that are fun and productive for you. Spend 100% of your time doing those things. That's the goal. Obviously, if you've got school, work, and other commitments, which you have to do, then you can't escape that. The idea is that if you can natu like automatically do the most important tasks that will get you to your important, that's your most valuable goals, you're winning. Compared to the guy who's trying to get to a certain goal, which he just can't because it's just too hard. So again, this means for the effortless section, before, actually, let me, let me just show you this. Before that you can get to this life where you're effortlessly making huge progress and achieving huge success, before you can get there, you need to first ascent, like go essentialist mode, figure out what's actually important in life. So first, like I'll, I'll actually write this down as a like First, figure out a maximum of three life areas that are important. Do MED for the other two. MED just means minimum effect. Actually, no, we should do a maintenance, sorry. Maintenance uh, effective. Maintenance, I'll we'll just say maintenance volume. Yeah. There. <clears throat> Pick just one to make progress on, and then you say, okay, well, and how to choose the one to make progress. Figure out what's constraining your life. So that was this analogy here. So you start with this. First pick a maximum of three. The less you pick, the more successful you'll be. So if you choose two, then you'll be more successful in those two. If you choose just one, you'll be more successful in that, but then obviously you live a one dimensional life. So for example, if you just chose one, then it might be like work, but that means literally family and health would suffer. So some people will literally, some people genuinely will choose one and just make it like boxing, for example and they don't actually care about their health outside of that. They only care about their health enough to like just be able to box so they don't care about family. It's like those people end up becoming wildly successful. And if you look at their lives, by the way, just in case anyone's kind of like hyped up by that, if you go and like actually watch the interviews of these people who have only chose one, all of them are deeply depressed. All of them, but you have to be. Literally, it's just the, the nature of it. You can become this world champion, Mike Tyson. There's an interview with him where he, he shows the belt and he goes like, all of them are just garbage, the, the garbage. Is that they don't mean anything, they're pointless because he, he had mental health problems. It's like when you've got a headache and you're unhappy through it, you've got this belt, it's like, well, who gives a fuck? I mean, but maybe you, you want to live that life. You probably see different things. If there is someone here who wants to like live the, oh yeah, I just want this one thing, fair enough. Figure that out first. Choose the essential few things, choose the one thing that you can currently work on and then like you want to make progress on and then just figure out how to make, you know what, no, 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 let me reword that. It's not about figuring out which thing you can do or how to like, you know, make something effortless. Because we've said here and maybe, maybe that can help, but I actually think it's simply just, it's more about Let me write this down, not about. It's probably about finding the thing that is effortless already. Because there's certain things which I have tried and it does, like for me, for example, I've never found this to change. What's effortless for me has not changed. Stretching 
always requires effort and discipline. Going to the gym has never required that. Working on a business has never required like real effort and discipline, apart from like the first month or something when I was smoking weed, but that was, I guess, more weed anyway. So it's, this is going to seem like something a bit counterintuitive, but I'd ask you this right now. Is there something that you're really working on and you've been struggling with that simply is just not effortless, but you just keep doing it just because Hamza said it was good? Because, oh, well, you know, I've got to become a YouTuber, right? That sounds like the best way. You know, Iman said the agency businesses are good. Because if you're trying to, you know, level up in this business right now and it requires discipline from you each and every day, you can certainly still get success from it. But it might be worth considering getting into the business or career that genuinely feels effortless because you'll want to do it for 14 hours a day. Just something to consider. Anything else? Essentialism and effortless. Let me think of something. I've, I've changed up so much of my life last uh, few weeks because of this. When you begin to ask these questions, you may be confronted by something which you don't actually want to listen to. Because when you start to ask yourself what's essential and what could be effortless for me, you might, be, you might realize that the answer is the thing that you're not doing. Or it might be, the, for example, that the thing you are doing that you've already started to visualize yourself in is actually not the thing that is essential in your life. Just it, writing in the chat, is there someone who has, it, in this call, realized something they're spending time on is probably not essential? What is it? Just like, tell me what like the, the topic is. Or... Women, random friends, uni, phone, friends going to the gym too much random friends yeah random friends is a big one Hamza YouTube videos watch your mouth bro <laughs> uh, remember with some of these you don't need to sacrifice so someone said like our oh, gym but it's hard to sacrifice A sacrifice is the wrong word because if there's something which is still essential, like it's a part of like, you know, you just want a few things in your life and gym's gonna be one of them. You don't wanna like stop going to the gym forever. You don't have to sacrifice the gym. You just have to just simply just maintain your gains whilst you're focusing on something else. You can like, this is what I said to Luca. He said like, whether or not YouTube is a priority. That doesn't make any sense. We need to respect words that we use. A priority doesn't make sense. Priority is just one. That's it. You need to, like, everyone needs to write this in chat. What is the priority? You should have this clear. It should be very clear. The priority. There's not two. If you say, and whatever we're putting down, write, write what it is right now. Write what the priority is in your life right now. Understand that, see everyone who's typing, and if you've typed in as well, understand that this means that everything else is behind this. So this means that to do YouTube, you need to put something else behind it. This means that to do the YouTube video, you need to wake up earlier. Otherwise, you're lying and you're bullshitting yourself. If you say it's health, well, then you better be healthy as fuck. You better be like actually like waking up, getting sunlight for 25 minutes, like Huberman says, and not drinking coffee for 90 minutes and meditating for 23 minutes and, and following all these strategies. Because if you wake up and you start working straight away, or you check your phone straight away, then it's not the priority. So you need to act like it, right? If, if this is the priority, everything else in your life that you've put, apart from the thing that you've just wrote, needs to be behind the thing. So for me, it's work. That's how you start to live like an essentialist. It's not as like cute and clickbait because if I told you, oh, well, you know, you can have everything you want and you know, oh, you want to do this, you can, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this, you know, it sounds proper cute. Now you're beginning to realize, if you're not hurt by what I've just said, I don't think you totally understand. It seems like Aaron understands. 
you should be kind of sad by what I've just said because this genuinely means that this because that you've probably got you're not a one dimensional human being you've probably got like three four five things that are interesting right now right you right here right now you should feel kind of sad and you should be thinking to yourself like oh fuck does that mean I can't do this thing anymore does that mean like I've got to stop like doing that like but, but I love going to the gym every day shall I only go once a week that's going to be boring You should be thinking like something kind of like slightly sad right now about that. Once or twice a week, max. If it's not the priority, the priority. If you type something above, which was different than the gym, go once or twice a week. Because you can't do it all. You can have a few, th like you can have an amazing life, by the way. You can have, for example, an awesome marriage, good close family, awesome business, awesome health. That's a lot of guys dream life. But that means that you can't have a vibrant social circle, charitable projects, the extra startup business, the podcast with your brother, the extra business, the Instagram theme page, the TikTok that you just want to try and, oh, Hamza, you should go to TikTok, bro. Oh, but the algorithm's really good. And, bro, man, fuck you. I've never made a TikTok account, bro. The amount of times when I was growing on YouTube and, and people told me like, oh, well, you should just make a TikTok. The algorithm's really good. But, like, do I look stupid to you? Like, you made a TikTok and like, you're still stuck at 200k subs. So it's like, you know, don't tell me what to fucking do, bro. <laughs> Is there anything else I can teach you? I'm trying to think. The way of the essentialist. What I will do 